<sighs> Get it, Steve. Winston Churchill once said that we shape our buildings and thereafter they shape us. And this quote was in the context of the massive rebuilding that Britain had to take on in the aftermath of World War II. And what he meant was that people tend to take on the qualities of the buildings they inhabit. Well, keep that in mind as I tell you this, that Gallatin County, our home, is routinely the fastest growing county in the state. Uh, that between 1980 and 2010, just 30 years, its population doubled. And that within the next 35 years, it's likely that the population will double again. So, <laughs> yes, if our buildings and the places they form will shape us, then it makes sense to ask a simple question, what kind of shape do you want to be in? If our structures will double, sorry, in the next 35 years, what are the actions we can take as a community to get in the shape that we want? Well, this is something that I thought a lot about as a kid. Um, as you know now, I grew up on the outskirts of Boise, Idaho. My subdivision, called Oakmont, which had neither oaks nor mountains, uh, was the eastern frontier of town in the 1990s. Activities for me were always a driving distance away, and I literally grew up playing in houses that were under construction. But somehow I learned about what land use planners do, and I thought to myself, that's what I want to be when I grow up, because being a land use planner is somehow second only to becoming an astronaut for, for kids. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, if I can have a hand in shaping walkable, active, fun places, then I can help give our next generation what I always wanted as a kid. So I became a planner, and I have educated myself about walkable, mixed-use development. At its core, it's composed of a variety of homes, uh, businesses, office, commercial spaces. What's really important, though, is that it's scaled to the human, that it provides people things to do, and that it provides people choices in where to live. Too often, though, I've heard walkable developments compared to some sort of dense high-rises in Tokyo, as if that's a scale that's appropriate for a place like Bozeman. In my mind, walkable development is to a place like Bozeman what the baby bear's porridge was to Goldilocks. Walkable communities don't have to be downtowns. Neighborhoods, new and existing, can be made more walkable by incorporating a sensible mix of context-appropriate uses. Maybe it's a corner store, a coffee shop, a bakery. Um, the thing is, there are things that can be done to enable neighborhoods to be more walkable. There are, of course, a few good reasons to building uh, communities. Uh, walking itself is very curative. Studies show that just 30 minutes of walking a day can help reduce the risk of diabetes and heart disease and more. Our man, uh, St. Augustine here, was at least aware of some of this when he coined the phrase, Silvature ambulando, it is solved by walking. We also know that walkable communities can help reduce vehicle travel, lessening carbon emissions that contribute to human exacerbated climate change. We know they can preserve habitat, wildlife habitat, by using the less space for the same number of homes. And we know they can preserve agriculture and open space for the same reasons, like. Building walkable communities can be financially optimal as well. This man is named Greg McCall. He's the principal of McCall Homes in Billings. In Billings, he's building a walkable community called Josephine Crossing. He presented at a conference I helped organize last year, and he reported that Josephine Crossing is selling one out of every five homes in Billings. It's impressive. But it's not all that surprising. The Sonoran Institute, where I work, conducted a study examining the housing market in several Western uh, communities. And what we found was that people were, on average, willing to pay about 18% more for a home in a walkable community. And in Bozeman, it's actually closer to about 20%. We know that walkable mixed-use buildings do well for local governments, returning more tax revenues on a per-acre basis than do their large-lot single-use counterparts. Tax revenues, of course, fund schools, public health and safety, trails and recreation. So from a dollars and cents perspective, in my mind, they seem to make a whole lot of sense. However, there's something of a downside here, as the affordability of walkable developments can be called into questions. And as I've studied this issue, it really boils down to one basic economic principle of supply and demand, which is that when demand surges, suppliers uh, pr produce more, uh, to meet that demand, and then prices theoretically stabilize as a result. There's a lot going on here, okay? But one of the big issues that Western communities face is a lack of supply. There's a lot of new 
and emerging information out there that shows that people, particularly my generation and interestingly my parents' generation, are looking for walkable communities. But there's a lack of supply. So all this brings up an incredibly important question. Why aren't we seeing more of this type of development? If the free market is using its invisible hand as it should, then isn't all this auto-oriented single-use development we see simply a result of pure market desire? Perhaps, yes, to some extent, absolutely, people demand that, there's no doubt. But on the other hand, we know that there are a variety of policies and subsidies and activities that influence the housing market. And we know that that influence tends to prioritize the creation of less walkable development over the creation of walkable development. So let's come back to Gallatin County here for a minute. Um, consider two possible futures of, of course, a thousand. Uh, both of these scenarios could accommodate up to 90,000 more people. Again, sorry. Um, the scenario on your left, you've got more walkable mixed-use development. The scenario on your right, you've got less walkable single-use development. All this is to point out to you all that there are choices available to us. <laughs> this did not happen. The way we grow is a result of the actions we've taken as communities. And there is simply no requirement that requires us to do things the way that we do. Uh, because we've created it, surely it's a system that we can recreate. Someone else said, I don't know who, that um, the only way to predict the future is to create it. And in my mind, when it comes to conservation benefits, public health benefits, to economic benefits, walkable development is the cat's meow. Um, if we're going to create the future we want, you do have to face one indispensable truth, which is that how you grow matters. Thank you very much.